Namaskar, good morning and good welcome morning. to this uh, Yeah, there is, I think, that uh, feedback of the mic. Anyway, we begin. Uh, Namaskar, welcome. Namaskar, welcome. Mm -hmm. There's some problem with the video. Just one minute. It's coming, echo is coming here. If I speak afterwards again, it comes echo. I think Jainji, we can Don't answer any call from this. Jainji, we can mute everybody. Then fine. Jainji, okay, yeah, mute. I've done that. We can mute everybody, the audio yes. so that it can be minimized. No, I think we can start because there was some, sorry for the delay. Namaskar and a very, very happy Sunday morning in this lockdown period as we enter the 143rd. Yeah, I have. So. One forty-third day of the lockdown period, and uh, it has been a life full of uh, topsy-turvy. And with the virus spreading its wings, I mean, one doesn't know where we are heading for. And just when it seemed as if the virus was getting under control, suddenly there has been spurt in cases uh, all around the country. Notwithstanding that, uh, we have to learn many lessons from this pandemic and uh, the endeavor. Sri Hariyarabhutra Bhajan Samaj has been that we have to somehow utilize these moments which uh, Lord has, uh, I think you'll have to give me one minute because I'm getting a feedback of my monitor, one minute. When I speak again, it is bouncing back. Okay, hold on. Why are you calling me? Right now, speaking Yeah, uh, I think there's some problem. We uh, begin again. I think uh, Lord Ayyappa wants us to start only at 11 a.m., which we had scheduled in the original, uh, our promo, you know, design. So we begin. Good morning. Namaskar once again to each and every one of you. Sorry for the minor technical disruptions which took place. Nonetheless, uh, we are entering the 143rd day of the lockdown. And uh, this has been a revelation of sorts as uh, none of us in our lives has ever witnessed some, such, uh, such a pandemic uh, of uh, this nature. 
that uh, we feel that uh, Lord Almighty wants us to learn some lessons from this pandemic and what has it brought around. Now, very frankly, if we introspect and see what our lives have been in the last uh, six months, so to say, and we are still uh, squirming and not knowing where we are heading for. Under the circumstances, the actual purpose of human lives comes to fore. What are we born for here on this planet Earth? Why has God sent us on this planet Earth? And what are our duties? Over the period of years, maybe 50, 60 years, I think we have uh, wavered away from the path of righteousness and we are heading towards a path which is totally destructive, cutting across barriers of caste, creed and religion. But when it comes to our own Hinduism or we are staying in a country, India, we have always been over thousand years, over centuries, coexisted and the interfaith which has been interwoven so nicely, we have always coexisted together and that should continue forever. But unfortunately, since the advent of British who introduced and infused this divide and rule policy, which unfortunately has been politicized to such an extent that religion has been brought into the fore and into the core of the system. And today we find ourselves in a place where we are pushed against the wall. And this is where we need to resurrect the sagging morals of the Hinduism, which is now in the depths of despair. Now here, how can we do it? Whether, whichever faith we belong to, again, before I begin, the disclaimer is that we are not talking about or disregarding any other faith. Each and every faith is important and pristine and sanctified as much as this Hinduism is. And fortunately, Hinduism is a way of life. Hinduism encompasses all religions. So please don't mistake me that when I'm saying Hinduism, that we are not talking about Sikhism, we are not talking about Islam, we are not talking about uh, against uh, Christianity. We are talking against humanity and how to evolve a religion. But we are focused on Hinduism because let other faiths prosper. That is what we at Hariyara Putra Vajan Samaj feel. And fortunately for us, our presiding deity, Lord Ayyapa, is a deity who is worshipped by people from all faiths. You have Babar Swami, who was a Muslim. Many Muslims go to Shabri Malay. There are so many people going to Shabri Malay. So let us remove from our mind that this is only for Hindus or this is not for Christians or Sikhs or Jains or Buddhists. No, this is for everyone. Now, the crux of the problem we come to today's topic is the role of youth in promoting spiritual way of life. And we all know that uh, the future of the country always lies in the youth. We always say that youth is the future of the country. And it doesn't uh, also change the scenario when we say that youth also is the future to promote and propagate and sustain religious values, spiritual values and religion. So we have wavered. Now we have with us two eminent speakers with us who are uh, global leaders and uh, you listen to their profound views. We are very fortunate that despite their very, very hectic and busy schedule, they have uh, agreed and conceded, acceded to join us and share their profound views with us. I will start with ladies. They say first, Dr. H.S. Aziza Jalaluddin, who is from Singapore. She is an interfaith advocate and global peace ambassador in the mission of uplifting consciousness in business and life. Born in Singapore, she started the journey in spirituality from the age of two. Exposed to the multi-religious environment in Singapore, learning the languages of Mandarin, Tamil, Arab, Malaya in her teenage years mingling with people of all race and religions, gave her much depth to experiencing the importance of interfaith harmony. Now, this is something which is really, really very, very profound. In 2002, she started a journey in a transformation, delving deeper into self-discovery. She has spoken in Siddhar conferences and world spiritual parliaments since 2012. She has traveled widely and online, impacted thousands of lives from USA, 
Singapore, Malaysia, India, UK, Australia, and many other countries. Together with the Sri Ayyappa Ji, as we all know him, he is the Lieutenant of Lord Ayyappa. I, I personally believe so. In 2018, together with Ayyappa Ji, she founded our Shine Go Global and Go Global Business School with vision of global peace through global business. Bringing together conscious global leaders to impact the world through conscious capitalism in Asia. This is Dr. Aziza Jalaluddin. And friends, you, can, you have heard her uh, you know, bio uh, data or CV, you can say, and you can realize the immense potential she has. And you should consider yourself lucky that you are going to listen to some profound words of wisdom from her. Then we have uh, Mr. Ayyapa Das, who is a social activist who started his Ayyapa journey since birth with his father founding ABAP, that is Ayyapa, that Prachar Seva Samiti. Ayyapa Ji has been in the social work as the youngest road track governor in India from the age of 17. National president of ABAP with more than 35,000 members nationwide. Ayyapa Das Ji has worked on supporting various Ayyapa organizations to come together for global unity. It is mentioned that he supported the journey of Shabri Malai Devasam Board to open their first international office in Malaysia. He is an advisor to many Ayyapa temples in Malaysia and Pan India, and also, of course, to our Shankaraliam, Sri Hari Rabutra Bhajan Samaj. His heart always dedicated to grow the community and support the growth of humanity beyond caste, creed, and religion. This he demonstrates in all his activities in his life. So friends, uh, you have uh, heard two profound global leaders with us, and we are very fortunate. And uh, this Sunday, I can assure you that you will take home. There's a good takeaway from you in terms of uh, their knowledge. So coming back straight to the topic of the role of youth, in promoting spiritual values. Now today, unfortunately, the youth is uh, actually chasing material wealth. Now, you know, it is rightly said, your bank balance is not your asset. Relationship is an asset, much more than your bank balance. Your bank balance is of absolutely no balance because the moment your bank balances go, your relationships go. So today, unfortunately, the youth attaches immense significance to the wealth through education. They invest their 24 hours or much more into education and trying to pursue careers which are so difficult. And the worst is that most of the youngsters want to go abroad and pursue their education. As in my previous talks, I was saying, what is wrong in being in a country in India? Now today, we have realized that the beauty of every individual on planet Earth, like Dr. Aziza started at the age of two, Ayyapada Ji also started at a very tender age of maybe 10 or 9, and then he was initiated at the age of 17. Now, this is the age, at the age of 3, 4, 5, that we should initiate our children into spirituality so that our society remains strong, the fabric of our society, of our city, state, nation remains strong. And due to the demands of education and the aspirations of soaring to heights to earn money, to accumulate wealth. Students have gone berserk. Today we find children leaving their parents and going and staying abroad and pursuing their careers. In the end, what are you living for? Even if you earn, say, millions of dollars, what is the relationship? Millions of dollars cannot buy a relationship. You are losing out and you are not giving back anything to the society. Today, all institutions, spiritual institutions in our city of Mumbai, I am talking about city, but I can say all over India are languishing for want of manpower because there is no second line. The youngsters are absolutely missing. So that is one thing which is really bothering each and every institutional head. So when we begin our conversation, we start with Dr. Aziza. What are your views on the role of youth in uh, promoting spiritual values? Aziza. Thank you, Zee. Namaskaram. Peace, greetings to everyone. The, uh, when you talk about youth role, I feel like asking ourselves, what is our role in the place of the youth? 
So for us is when you look at it as adults, we have a very important role to play in guiding the uh, youths and to take them forth in our journey with them. So, you know, when I talked to, when I wrote there, you know, that my life journey started at age of two, just a little bit of recap is because I grew in a multicultural environment yet soaked in my, our own traditions. My uncle was part of the forming of the Sharia laws in Singapore in the 1965. So I grew up in his house, two year old running around and pampered by the family while, you know, uh, literally while he's conducting his religious classes. So, you know, listening in at that tender age kind of really grew me today. Only now I'm realizing, wow, that really found a foundation for me. So the same Aziza, the two year old is also the two year old Aziza who, when my mom is busy taking care of my younger sister, was running around in the neighborhood with the families of our Hindu friends and literally coming back with the prasad and all the other things. And at home, I was literally having these uh, make, makeshift idols where I take my mom's flowers and put on the chairs and do some prayers and I get the coding for that. So what am I saying? This is the cultural uh, exposure with Almighty's grace. Uh, I was given to really see the unity in diversity in of our, of our human people, human human growth. So as adults, what are we doing with that kind of a diversity that we are exposed to? For me, it has always been a journey of self-discovery to see how best I can perform. And when I am growing, I can see our community growing and our nation growing. So at the end of the day, it is not the role of youth we should be more concerned with it is how we can fine tune ourselves so that the youth can be allowed a space to grow if that makes sense to anyone here this is the clarity we need to set in because we're always looking at how can i change this how can i change that how can i make a difference we can make a difference to others only when we make a difference to ourselves our consciousness and i have to say at this juncture coming from an islamic background or foundation and dress like this. I honestly feel that all religions started in the land on the continent of India. So we come from a very, very highly spiritual space of divinity. And as roots from India, wherever we are spread across the world, this religion, the term religion is just a system that has been created to show us and coming from the roots and I, you know, even in, in Islamic scriptures, we say we have to believe in prophets and messengers, not just Nabi Muhammad. We're talking about messengers and prophets who have showed up before. So we're talking about since the day the world has started. So where did it start? In the continent of India. So if that is the root, then we're talking about Agastyas and all the various deities that is worshipped as gods are messengers of goodness and greatness for humanity. So how much are we relating to that and that truth? And that is what I feel we can impart to our youth to see the roots, the richness of our foundation and our, and our growth. I think that's my take. I bet you want to add on to that. Yeah. So Aziz, I think uh, that is something which is very, very profound and uh, I wish um, many people take cue from uh, your philosophy and the stand uh, you have taken. And uh, this is the need of the art that we need to coexist with all the faiths. And actually it has been distorted to such an extent that we have divided ourselves being Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, and uh, you know, and everything has been for to gain an end political, you know, result. And it has been politicized to certain extent to such a great extent that uh, the whole religion has gone into a turmoil. Now we come back to Ayyapada um, Ji, who is, uh, of course, everybody knows, spearheading the Save Shabrimala movement and who has been in the forefront and very vociferous and uh, in the Save Shabrimala movement as well as also in protecting the Hindu Dharma. And he has been doing an astounding service not only in the southern part of the country, but spreading his wings across the country, organizing many such webinars to awaken the dormant spirits which are lying in the youth and even in the people. Now, when we talk of youth, it is equally the responsibility of the parents and elders 
to ensure that bygones are bygones. Even now, the youth should realize wherever they are. Now, it's a little too late in the life for the youths to come back from the foreign lands back to India and give back to the society. But I think they should can start thinking that, yes, maybe down the years, because this pandemic is only a beginning. It is a you know shape of things to come in the future. We don't know what's going to happen. And if this is what is going to be the state of affairs in our country, I think we are heading for doom. So, Ayyapadisji, what is your views on the role of youth? Thank you. Thank you, everyone. A beautiful Sunday. And I think I am uh, at another a happy moment to be associated with uh, Harikarabhutra Bhajan Samaj. And I love to be part of every one of you. So, let me get into uh, both these people who always speak from the heart. I know Dr. Aziza. I know JNG. They are everything with heart. I just go into my logical mind and speak on what is the role of youth in spirituality. So that the reach will be much more. And as what uh, JNG said, it can be very much ocifers also. Right. I am responsible. Whatever thing, whatever the discussion, whatever happening around us, I just wanted to quote, I am responsible. I mean, every one of us hearing, all the elders, all the parents, spirituality, religious part, I just wanted to set the pace saying, I am responsible. Every one of you are responsible. Can we have a flashback? Flashback Absolutely. Every one of us, number generation, Kuripa number generation, Amirka Kudi, the generation, we went on behind the materialistic path. Panam Venam, Sambadi Kanam, Sotu Sekanam, Namlodia, Vele, 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 Kudumata Paka Nerangriade, Koinigodia, Valapati, Paka Nerangriade. So we have been spending a lot of time. Are they natural number every Valandavando? Kalambra in the Chakulikano, Ade Madri Vandu, and Sami Kumura Pogano, Neti Levibudi, you know, Chantana Mirno, Indan Napano, Coil the Session like Kalandakano, Uja Karmanga, the Kuda Varno, Apama Porangana Kuda Pinadia Poyano, Sangal and Melaka Kurti, Namam Sultan, the Okando were wishing a Sayar and Jo, Adalai Pedirkida, Adalai Ye Lamapoche. Who are to be blamed? We are to be blamed first. We couldn't really instill. The way our children should have been brought up. That's why we have to do this. 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 We have to remind her. If not, we have to do this. 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 We have to you need to start from your home at least by 6.30, 7 o'clock. Two hours traffic jam. You can't go to the house. You can't go to the house. You can't go to the So this is the biggest handicap what this generation has. Because in the generation, there is a transition, a transformation. Where in the generation has come. There is a computer. You come. You click off the mouse. Total digitalization. We have experienced it. We have it. We failed in our basic duty of really upbringing our kids. So that is where I just very openly, including every one of us, me, I accept, I am responsible. I couldn't do. When I was there for 21 years into my corporate world, working with insurance, I, didn't, I had the least time to spend time with my child, with my child. I didn't have time. So, I'm going to go to the time. I'm going to go to the time. I'm going to go to the time. So, I'm going to go to the time. So, number character is not a good thing. All these things have been come. 
அண்ட் அதர் டைம்ஸ் தான் நம்ம இன்னொரு விஷயம் பார்த்தோம்னா நம்ம வளர்ந்த மாதிரி அவங்க வளரல நம்மளை வளர்த்துன மாதிரி அவங்க வளரல அவங்கள பொறுத்த வரைக்கும் நம்ம டிவிய பார்த்துருக்கோமா நம்ம இந்த சுகங்களையோ அல்லது காரியங்களையோ சந்தோஷங்களையோ பார்த்துருக்கோமா நமக்கு தெரிஞ்சது எல்லாம் என்னது கிட்டிப்புழு விளையாடுறதுல இருந்து வழிகுண்டு விளையாடுறதுல இருந்து சின்ன சின்ன வீட்டுல உட்கார்ந்து இருக்கிற விளையாடு அப்பா அம்மாவோட உட்காந்து தாத்தா பாட்டியோட உட்காந்து அவங்க சொல்லக்கூடிய கதைகளை கேட்கறது சோ தெர் வாஸ் அ ரியல் பாண்டேஜ் நம்ம குடும்பத்துல தெர் வாஸ் அ ரியல் பாண்டேஜ் தட் பாண்டேஜ் அஸ் ரியலி மிஸ் இன் திஸ் ஜெனரேஷன் இப்ப இருக்கக்கூடிய எங்க ஜெனரேஷன்ல அது மிஸ் ஆயிடுச்சு அவங்க முழுக்க டைம் கிடைச்சதுன்னா கம்ப்யூட்டர் மொழி போய் உக்கிறாங்க அல்ல வீடியோ கேம்ஸ் பாக்குறாங்க அல்லது சேட் பண்றாங்க இதுதான் அவங்களுடைய டைமா போச்சு நம்மளும் விவேர் பிஸி so this is where i just want to set the pace saying we are responsible i am responsible i couldn't do justice to my children my child in up bringing her in the same way as i have been brought by my dad by my mom my my grandparents in bringing my child so this is where the whole thing has to start so jenji i just want to set the pace in saying this and let's carry on thank you ji thank you i think that was indeed very very hitting nail on the head and uh, in present days we have seen in the last 40 years what is happening is uh, even before the child is born when the mother is carrying people rush to hospitals to book maternity homes and uh, when the child is born the next thing they do is they rush to schools to secure admission in lower kg now see the whole cycle of events is such that the moment they get admission then they are they already plan that what will the child do and before he is in say fifth or sixth standards they decide that my child is going to go abroad because that has become a status norm because my neighbor's son is studying in us he is studying in canada one is studying in harvard one is studying in mit one is studying in cambridge so that aspirations are built in right from the beginning even before the child is educated from the school and to ensure that the aspirations of the parents and of course also to some extent the children students they focus their entire energies and lives towards that goal into education going for classes going for trainings going for tuitions in the process they neglect their bounden duties and the parents also are equally responsible as you rightly said because then the parents don't even allow the children to perform their basic duties of going to temples or following their religious uh, rituals or religious festivals nothing so what happens is the child is 24 by 7 engrossed and put pressure on education and he forgets everything else so his concentration only is on education and the career which he is going to build maybe after 22 23 years he must do engineering computer engineering mbbs or he must go to london school of economics he will come back he will learn more the whole end line the bottom line is earning that he will earn a seven figure salary or a six figure salary but in the process you are doing a great damage to not only the fabric of your family but also of your society because you are depriving the society of a young hand which would have actually helped in prospering of the society and the religious and spiritual institutions which our ancestors our parents have built and nurtured and taken us and today it is a fact whether people like it or not religion whichever religion be it hindu jainism sikhism muslim christianity every religion that is the basic foundation for building a human being without the values of really i mean having religious values you just cannot live and then you are chasing material wealth and i told you once the wealth goes your value goes once your relationship is not established you don't add value to your relationship and once your wealth goes your relationship goes and then you find in a state of total disarray as you are now so this is what the parents should realize that instead of putting pressure and aspiring for themselves actually during the exam the parents are more tense than the student than the child because they want the child to get 100 marks so the child is under enormous pressure because why the parents want because they want that their children should get more marks get good uh, admissions into good college so that they can go abroad and then you beg borrow steal you take loans and and my last talk i was telling most of us are li- living on emis i mean why what is the need for that 
why don't you study in india why there are so many colleges there are so many institutions which are much more better than the institutions abroad be content with what you have so that when you study in your home ground in midst of your parents in midst of the company of your family you know earlier we had the joint family concert but even though now that has vanished but nonetheless even if now the family thing nucleus itself is reduced to just you know either a pair of parents and one child or maybe maximum two child beyond that it's a taboo so with this restrictions what should the parents do should ensure that they keep the children with them so when they are studying in their environment they can at least ensure that the child devotes at least 20% of the time going to temples going to religious institutions and maybe twice a week performing social services in these institutions whether he is a muslim whether he is a sikh whether he is a hindu whether he is an isai whatever it is it is a bounden duty of a youth to do service in this temple organization so that when he eventually graduates and starts earning see god has scripted your life what is due to you will come but god is also so very is putting us to an asset test that if you aspire for say six figure seven or seven figure salary and you become desperate then he wants to teach you a lesson he will give you that six figure or seven figure salary but with that will come a host of troubles and problems and miseries which are so you know untold that in the end you will realize that the seven figures six figures actually have got no value but if you help the building of society society and you know these religious institutions your future generations will prosper and there'll be lot of lot of benefit to the society and to your children and there will be a sense of security national security is of a paramount importance and today national security is at stake terrorism is increasing why and who do you find in uh, i mean i mean as a terrorist it is the youth they have been misled in the form of uh, non taking them to religion and the lure of money lust power uh, corrupted power the youth has been lured enticed and they have taken to terrorism so national security at stake now if we are not going to have our youth protected by taking them to religious institutions making them pray having the cover of the blessings of the lord almighty i think that will work magic and wonders and as lord krishna said in bhagavad gita that your life is scripted every action of yours is scripted only thing he said i will allow you i will loosen the ropes to see how you proceed towards your goal and if you waver find the reins are with him he will allow you to waver because he wants to check your devotion and be rest assured that your salaries your incomes everything is predetermined but if you fall in line with the doctrines of religion be it islam christianity hinduism whatever is due to you will come nobody can take it away and whatever is not due to you will go off in forms of paying hospital bills paying medical bills popping up of pills and doing all those things which god will make you realize that you have wasted your life aziza your take on this the yeah, i i i strongly believe that at the end of the day what uh, i pet you are saying is the awareness that needs to come to us there's uh, always a three step approach in, in taking ourselves into a better human being so if we are all going to be striving to be a better human being the first level is awareness awareness that something is not working within ourselves in our society when we are very clear about that then only we can take action right now we see there is a problem but we are seeing it as a problem outside us it's everybody else and what ipaji is saying is to take the responsibility own up that something didn't work in our journey and then we will be able to get creative in our way of approaching the issue at hand if we see it as an issue and i want to go down to the root of it why are we doing something in our life what is our purpose in our life you know when your uh, ipaji is talking about and all of you are speaking i'm i'm reflecting back i have three kids they are 20s and i remember you know in childhood days even from my stomach actually from the moment they were in my stomach i have been talking to them and praying with them and literally for 6 months we call it hot housing i started doing that so it was a journey that i started you know as a homemaker i, I after my first child only i went into 
becoming a homemaker. So, I literally went to uh, what we call hot housing. So, it's a process of speaking to the child every day, putting music, putting sound. So, on a certain level of even uh, Islamic songs, I will put and Tamil songs, uh, very, very, you know, interesting things I will share with them. So, in every day, it becomes a very powerful uh, mind wiring. mind wire brain wiring. So, and the wire So, for me, it has been a very powerful. So, roots in the world. How are we able to root our children and guide them through? So, this is an important process we can put ourselves to show my children. Even though I went through a lot of relationships stuff at the early part, but for the first five to six years, they were guided in a most divine space. And, you know, from as young as uh, three years, five years old, we will sit down together and we'll do what I feel like saying, which is a, is a ritual. We sit down and get to know what everybody's feeling, how they are going through their life. And uh, religion is <laughs> We never force them to pray or anything, just guiding them, guiding them from the space of love. So from the space of love, our natural love, they fall into it. I will say, they fall into the trap, <laughs> the trap of being in divinity, the trap of being divine, being in their heart, which is very important. Why are we doing what I'm doing? As a son, as a daughter, parents or affinity, and the closeness and the bonding in the regardless of in a uh, path and the and the Marindalmi they'll understand. I know his daughter as well, she's such a beauty. And every mother or Purindunarko, they will understand that such a thing is happening. So Namaloda support if I panga nama in the panel nama could hear panga. That's how I feel uh, the, that has come out as a truth. Right now, I don't have to go around telling my children to pray. Sometimes they will ask me. So, that's a friendship, a relationship built for me. I feel it's a lag in the community, especially in the society, not only in India, it's a global thing. In Singapore, we have really spoiled our kids also. But the Singaporean context is the Indian. So, so that's why the clarity is certain progress. So, the first thing first, why are we doing what I do? Nama Yedika Val Balro and the clarity of Kuno Namaloda Balki Purikolena Samuhata Society Sandada Ilava. No, what is it? And the clarity Namal Kwandichina, all these things I feel will fall a beautiful uh, path for us to walk. Yeah, that's my take. <laughs> Yeah, good, uh, Aziza. I think you have made your point very clear. But again, uh, coming back to, uh, you know, the role of the parents in uh, grooming the children, which uh, plays a very significant role. I mean, we don't even today allow our children to play pray in our own houses. Today, when the child gets up in the morning, he is so tense because he has to rush to either school or college or might maybe prior to going to school, he has to go to his uh, classes. Now the classes begin at 6 a.m. So there is no time to pray. Charity begins at home. Now you are not even doing charity at home. So even he doesn't pray in his home itself. He just rushes out with uh, something in hand, goes to the classes, from there goes to school again, back to classes, back home. So there is absolutely no connect with the religion whatsoever. And today the worst part is the amount of unlimited and uh, the freedom which has been given to children by the parents and the way they have been pampered, the way children have been pampered, I think it has been grossly misplaced by the children. Misused, abused and misplaced. For the simple reason, if you take the living styles of the children today, is something which is really a cause of great concern for times to come. Now, the youth, we are talking about youth, I find that many of the youth, especially girls, are so fitness conscious. 
and dieting has become a norm and a fashion of the day i mean you are not eating the food which is you are bound to eat and which is the tradition of your country and your own uh, demographical uh, requirement now we are chasing foods like italian mango this mango you are lebanese and chinese and japanese and you are ignoring your indian food then you have unfortunately due to the pressures of the education and going to classes and going to all these aspirations of going abroad and attending classes like you have a g exam and so many z mat or something to get to abroad you form groups now unfortunately for the children those groups become the nuclear of their life in the process they ignore their own families the children today ignore their own parents and families because the friends become paramount importance because everything centers around their friends and with the whatsapp you find them chatting 24 by 7 with their friends either on facebook or on whatsapp so the values have gone for a toss now under this scenario what is going to be the future after say 5 10 years parents should realize that hinduism is in danger your religion is in danger your temple institutions are in danger now today yes the same youth when it comes to festivals like ganesh chaturthi or maybe you know dasara navratri you find them so charged up you have this community uh, sarvajanik ganesh mahotsav now suddenly you find out of the blue the spirituality or the love for lord ganesha coming into the children but that is because of a particular selfish reason of being close to the group and the society i i am quite sure that there is got no intensity of worship towards lord ganesha because if it was so then it has to be sustained you cannot worship god only for 6 days or 7 days or 11 days a year and say that i am going to ganesh i am going to conduct ganesh chaturthi and that that's my my spiritual obligations of my lives are over it's absolutely wrong you are living in a wrong notion navratri has become a fashion parade most exotic and expensive clothes jewelry is being bought for navratri for what navratri was a festival where you have worship durga uh, uh, goddess durga pray to her and there is a sanctified way of worship even for ganesh chaturthi the whole concept started by lokmanya tilak was for a different purpose but now which has been now totally taken over and a new shape has been given and it is a form of a social gathering more than a spiritual and a religious gathering let everyone and everyone save and accept few institutions temple institutions you have like the one at ram mandir gsb which is at vadala which has got a ram temple and they organize ganesh chaturthi festivals in a very disciplined manner and they have functions 365 days now how many such institutions in our country organize these festivals which are temple related others are all sarvajanik you collect money donations you coerce people into donating money and then the youth gets connected to only that festival now for that 11 days you forget everything and then you are in that uh, pandal with your friends till night 2:30 3 chit chatting and enjoying enjoy your life there is absolutely no problem but why don't you continue this practice of practicing religion for 365 days for 10 minutes at least 5 minutes in a day when you are leaving your house go to your puja room and pray pray to your own household deity your kula devta pray and then at least go to the temple when you step out that is what my parents have taught me that before you step out to work just visit a temple that is a jain derasar in your close vicinity and in bombay we are fortunate that every nook and corner you have temple be it a jain temple be it a hindu temple any temple just go and pray so this slowly it will start inculcating that spiritual values in you and then one day you will realize that yes you have some duty towards the religious you know element of your life now today we are doing a barter system with god it's only when we are pushed to the wall that we run towards god and then we do trading commercial trading with god you do this i'll give you that you do this i'll give you that i mean see we have to be givers not takers you can't be suckers all your life you can't go to god only in times of distress 
and in times of distress also god will help you because he's all compassionate he's all love but again with strings attached because let us not forget people are living in a world of misnomer where they feel that okay but if i go to god when i am in need and i tell him okay i'll give you 10000 rupees 11000 rupees my problems will be solved forget it your problems may be solved but bigger problems may come later but if you are uh, if you have seamless devotion towards him then you don't even have to bribe him problems will not come yes you are born with your karmas like lord krishna said your karmas are there with you you have to live with your karmas now once you live with your karmas what happens god will provide you an umbrella and you are going to get wet in any which ways when it rains you are going to get wet but the intensity of your getting wet will be mitigated to such an extent that you will be able to survive the onslaught of the rains this is a simple logic i mean there is no rocket science in this so the parent should ensure that from now on when the child leaves the i mean when he gets up and takes bath the first thing he does is goes to the house temple room or whatever a small puja thing or maybe even you have a photo you may not have a puja room even a photo just pray for 2 3 minutes there are so many potent and powerful mantras in each religion you have om namo narayan tarang in jain you have gayatri mantras you have so many things you have so many sharanams chant at least 18 sharanams 18 steps or chant namo narayan tarang the naukar mantra which is supposed to be so powerful or chant gayatri gayatri mantra no today even the upanayana has become a sort of a social uh, function because there have been couple of functions where i have seen after upanayana evening they have a social gathering morning is a ritual thing and evening a social sort of reception now where are we heading for upanayana is nothing to do with the social gathering now let's be very honest and after upanayana how many of the children really perform sandhya vandana how many parents ensure how many mothers or fathers ensure that the child is doing sandhya vandana they do it because it's a demand of the society you have to please the society you have to feed 500000 people and saying that you have done upanayana but then what is the significance of upanayana what is the significance of sadham what is the significance of praying what is the significance of reciting the naukar mantra every day in your lives what is the significance of reciting gayatri mantra teach them to the children and unfortunately our syllabus also our educational syllabus in india has been so british oriented and unfortunately the history has been so distorted to such a damaging extent that today we have forgotten our basic rich heritage and culture we had the ramayana we had mahabharata we had so many great saints sons coming adi shankara who started the advaitic philosophy and who propelled the resurrection of uh, hinduism which was actually on the verge of extinct so uh, adi shankara at the tender age of say he, at the age of 9 he set around on foot to travel throughout the length and breadth of country propagating hinduism and through his advaitic philosophy resurrected hinduism creating four madras why did he do that so now that everything is going i mean to shambles so the whole crux is that the parent should forget their egos come out live, uh, you know outlive of their being in the status conscious social society status now if a parent feels that if i tell my group ladies kitty parties or maybe even the parents oh my child is going to a temple or my child is involved with the religious service they'll be looked down upon so they want their children to be in an affluence affluence is a curse so being in that affluent state of affluence is the norm for the parents today so they want their children to be in a state of affluent society today ask any parent he will say i want my son to study in the best of schools where dhirubhai ambani son studied where amitabh bhai bachan son studied or when sharukh khan son studied why why not in a school which is next door to you syllabus is the same but the status consciousness now this is the main damaging thing which is harming our society and spoiling our children Jainji. today you go anywhere you find if the child cries what do they do they hand over the mobile to the child and keep him quiet so aziza what do you have to say on this i, I just wanted to say something when you said around uh, you know sharing about the culture i know 
one of the things that happened to me, I'm going to be a person in between the generations, okay? There is a generation of us who have followed the parents just what they say and just followed it without asking questions. And then there is the generations right now, they want to know what is it and why is it so. So whatever cultural things that's being placed with us, it needs to be explained. I grew up, my father will have an answer for all my whys. We are all curious human beings. We want to know why do we do something? Why does it happen? So can we have patience as parents to explain to our children why does something happen and why do we do certain certain puja and why this it has always been a powerful journey for me to understand the hindu culture and the and the various uh, rituals that's being done it is not ritual you know when uh, i went for a wedding a hindu wedding there is no, the way that the whole thing was done up with so much of clarity every single part of it with the clarity of the ritual is it being explained are we giving the children the why answers, which is so crucial. And when the why is fulfilled, they will find more meaning to what they are doing right now. Because right now, especially the exposed to so much of media and everything, they just brand it as superstition and they stop it there. Because we don't have an answer for them. So when we can step into the space of answering, even, this is why it's done. This is how we do it. And you know how the certain uh, rituals are being uh, progressed. Even the way the temples are built, why the energy flows in certain way. All these things will become so powerful for people to understand that they need to be in the vibration because as human beings, our mind moves around. So these are rituals that kind of binds us and hold us in that space. Even with that, because we are following it blindly without even understanding what it's doing for us, in because we followed our parents saying, but in the they want to know why. So it becomes a powerful energy shift for everybody. And so the patient explain Panna. I feel that the children nowadays are extremely, we call them the you know indigo kids, they are very highly spiritual people. The mind is very open, the heart is very open, they are very much for the world. They will be able to see it. In the, in the gap, and my humble submission is that only. Yeah, I mean, as is absolutely true, and uh, this is what actually needs to be done. But again, uh, coming back to our spiritual values and religious values, and as I said, uh, today's youth is living in such a state of, uh, you know, the whole concept is such that uh, students uh, want to do IIMs. I have also mentioned earlier, maybe MBAs, IIMs or IITs, whatever it is, fine, it's a very good course. But then they don't know to keep their head on their shoulders and keep their feet grounded. For them to excel, what they do is they follow certain unethical values and uh, rules which are against the basic tenets of human values and lives. Then they want to show their efficiency to the organizations and then they, their whole focus is towards career building. Nothing wrong with that. It's absolutely fine. Career building is fine, but don't lose your human values and human relationships in the process. But this has been lost by most of them. So what happens is when you do that and once you reach a stage, reach a status in a company, maybe an MNC, you become maybe a general manager or a vice president or maybe a, say, president, then for you, that is the world. Then religion and religious activities take a backseat and then you start looking down upon them and then you start visiting temples or religious functions only when you are invited with all decorum and decor. Now, you don't need invitation to go to a temple. It should be an sort of it should come with, from within you now your position as a president or as a general manager or as a vice president is temporary the moment you retire you are gone your relationships are gone nobody is going to look at you i have seen the fate of big people who have been mds of various big mncs today they are languishing and regretting and living a life of remorse because nobody is looking up to them because when they were in power 
I mean, they were in a different world. They never helped the society. They never helped in uh, contributing or getting funds from their, uh, you know, offices towards uh, religious causes. They felt it is below the dignity and they said, no, religion, we will not. And the biggest misnomer is, no, we will do charity only for old age homes. We will do charity for this. But then you are promoting something which is negativity and you are promoting something where we are forcing your children to put your parents in like old age homes. So why do you do this? I mean, when you are in a position of power to help, whatever companies you be, be grounded, be open, be more transparent and start helping the society. Because remember, when you retire, this is the same society and the institutions you will have to fall back upon. And you start ignoring them, pursuing your careers, pursuing money and creating a bank balance. Your bank balance will have no worth. Understand one thing, Shivkara very rightly said, the biggest asset of human being is assets not of bank balance, but of relationship balance. Because if you have good relationship, with good relationship, one phone call can solve any problem. But even if you have thousands of crores of rupees, your problems will not get solved. Relationships can solve your problem. And that is so profound and so true. So this youth should realize that pursuing career for the sake of status, sake of, for the sake of accumulating wealth, sake of buying properties and holding money and wealth so that when I retire, I have got so many money in bank balance, I've got so many property, so I am comfortable. God will never allow you to rest in peace. That RIP will come after you pass away. But you are living, you are RIP when you are living. That is the tragedy which you don't realize. So when you are in power, when you are absolutely in a state to help, this is the time when God wants to test you. And when you are in that position, you start helping people. Join the movements. You are taking leaves from office, LTC. You are going one month vacation with your family abroad, exotic locations. Go. Nothing wrong. Cut down that vacation for one month, cut it down to 20 days, 10 days, devote to social service, devote to religious service. When I say, okay, go to temples, help in community prayers, community festivals, community, then you celebrate your Ganesh Chaturthi, you celebrate any other festival as it is, but then you are sustaining your level of spirituality at which you know that you are balanced. Now, if you are spiritually well, you know, imbibe yourself, then you can be firmly grounded. But if you have no spiritual foundation, no religious values, no religion background, no religious fundamentals, I think you are living in a world of falsity and that is the doomsday. And that is why today people like Ali Abadas have to scream their throats out to save Shabri Malai, which has now suddenly, now last about a decade, we have seen the rot stemming in Hinduism and systematically one after the other, there has been a blow which is being dealt to Hinduism, Ayapada's your views on this. Yes, <laughs> I think we are getting into the real part of how we can really involve youth into the movement. So, we have been hearing uh, to Dr. Aziza speaking about uh, how things are really positioned uh, for the earlier generation and the current one. Okay, so this is a time of high tech. The missing one is the high touch. As what Jainji very rightly said, the relationships are missed. Relationships, So the high tech, how a high touch can be involved. Just imagine, today is Sunday. And I am uh, very much uh, uh, thankful and really grateful for the work Harikara Putra Bhajan Samaj is doing. In the Sunday, in the Sunday, எல்லாருக்கு <laughs> Elderly people are governing the country, but they are going to be in the relationships. They are going to be in the relationships. They are going to be in the old age. So, how we are going to position spirituality into the minds of youth? 
that's a very important thing ena namba vandu aziza avanga sonnaanga romba arumaiya sonnaanga adhaavadhu appa amma tata paati enna sonnaalo kanna moodi namba seiyadhu kiridhi we have been doing it we did it and that's what the good thing we are grateful to them we are enjoying the roots of it but at the same time innik irukkira kolindhinga innik irukkira youth why 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 nu kete nammala tholachirukkranga and the why ku seriyana answer kedikkilena they not prepared to get into anything so the why ku answer nikkuda spirituality eppadi nama position pannirukrom the spirituality as what jain ji said chennai uh, idhula pathinga mumbai la pathinga ganesh chaturthi it is going on in a big way navaratri it is going on a big way but it's not a 365 days divinity which is flowing it's a divinity flowing for a particular festival and the real intention is something different yes i to 100 person accept so for that to happen for that to be changed let us position spirituality in a very concrete way involve them as i earlier said i am responsible the parents nammella sonna mari are we making the youth responsible நம்ம கோயில் நடக்கிற விசேஷங்களுக்கும் இல்ல நம்ம ரிலிஜியஸா நடக்கிற விசேஷங்களுக்கும் வீட்டுல நடக்கிற விசேஷங்களுக்கும் ஆர் பி மேக்கிங் அவர் சில்ட்ரன் ரெஸ்பான்சிபிள் ஐ நோ பிரிட்டிபல் நான் ஸ்கூல்ல படிக்கிற காலத்துல சண்டே ஆன என்னுடைய வேலை மார்க்கெட்டுக்கு போகணும் என்னென்ன பொருள் வாங்கணும்னு நோட் பேப்பர்ல எழுதி நான் என்ன பண்ணுவேன் மார்க்கெட்டுக்கு போய் பொருளை வாங்கிட்டு வர்றது இன்னைக்கு நம்ம குழந்தைங்கள்ட்ட சொன்னோம்னா எதுக்கு போனோம் ஜஸ்ட் ஆப் இருக்குது இது பண்ணுவோம் டைப் பண்ணுவோம் முடிஞ்சு போச்சு இங்க வந்து டோர் டெலிவரி கொடுப்பான் சொமேட்டோ இருக்குது ஸ்விக்கி இருக்குது high tech world appa anga vand relationship va kondu varadhu eppadi adala namakku inga missing aayiruchu so and the missing la indha maarradhukku positioning is very important so i agree with jaindeep and he had been saying iniki political parties they are finding it very difficult for their survival political parties la or infusion of young blood kondu vandatha avanga survival e nadakkudhu we have seen in india or 6 years back there was a whole dramatic change and you know pretty well the 10% of the youth newly enrolled youth changed the whole thing of the indian political system what had happened when barack obama was there he just used a single word called as change so if that has to happen how are we going to make them responsible let's involve them let's really understand that they are given the opportunities and the opportunities it should not be really forced on them avanga kitta force paniyaachu na innik irukkira generation kekka ready kedaal initial reluctance namba edavadhu force pannom na mudiyadhu adu appa va irukatum amma va irukatum thatha paatiya irukatum modho varra vaartha mudiyadhu ngatha ana namba ellame tamil oru palamuli ketirukom liya aadra maata aadi karakano paadra maata paadi karakano idu namakku theriyadhu kedaiyaada namba ellam padichu varadha namakku theriyadha vishayam why not we get into their space where their shoes understand what is that they require which one is attracting them you know generation gap and the karathile indichina avula namba we didn't mind about it innikku generation gap ngiradhu oru migapriya gap a irukku konja yosichu paathumna oru 10 varsham kalichu tv ella vandha kaalathile yosichu paarenga tv la paathumna sanda da veetla nadakkum serial paakkara ladies நியூஸ் பாக்குறது கிரிக்கெட் பாக்குறது அல்ல கார்ட்டூன் பாக்குறது இன்னைக்கு இப்ப வீட்டுல ரெண்டு மூணு டிவி இருக்கிறதுனால அந்த பிரச்சனை கிடையாது ரெண்டாவது எல்லாமே நியூக்ளியஸ் ஃபேமிலி ஆனாலும் பிரச்சனை கிடையாது ஒரு டிவி வச்சிருந்த காலத்தை பார்க்கும் போது எவ்வளவு பெரிய பிரச்சனைகள் சோ அவங்க தேவைகள் என்ன அப்படின்னு நம்ம தெரிஞ்சு இப்ப ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் ஹரிஹர புத்திர பஜன் சமாஜ் ஐ நோ கிரிட்டிபல் யூ பீப்பிள் ஆர் டூயிங் ஹியூமன் சர்வீஸ் ஐ ஹவ் பிக்னஸ்ட் இட் அம்டி நம்பர் ஆஃப் டைம்ஸ் நம்ம அங்க யூத் எப்படி இன்வால்வ் பண்ணணும் so nammude organization ye how can a youth wing can be installed how can a youth wing can be really created i need to mention about a couple of people with uh, uh, the permission of uh, jain ji in the whole activity nadakkuradhukku pathinga in the live on our series nadakkumbodu dubai la irukka kudiya purnima vo inge irukka kudiya pavitra vo babu mama avare kuzhandigal involve panni seiranga na because they had been given responsibilities yes you need to do appreciation you are appreciated adhe maadhiri ovvathungalude kuzhandigala namba ye responsibility kodukkudadu fix the responsibility oru vela namba expectation salavukku avanga seiyama varalam oru vela avanga seiyame pogalam oru taaru maaro senjittu pogalam let's not bother about it give them a responsibility guide them supervise them make them understand idu ipdi pannupa adu apdi pannupa nu sonna 
I'll tell you, நம்ம தலையில இருக்கிற நம்முடைய பாரத்தை நம்ம குறைக்க முடியும் டெஃபினெட்லி பீங் இன் தோர்ஃப்ரண்ட் ஆஃப் தி சபரிமலா மூமெண்ட் ஐ நீட் டு வெரி ரொம்ப இதுவாகவே சொல்றேன் இன்னைக்கு வரக்கூடிய சபரிமலைக்கு வரக்கூடிய ஜனங்கள்ல பாத்தீங்கன்னா ஐயப்ப பக்தர்கள்ல பாத்தீங்கன்னா மோர் தென் ஃபார்ட்டி பர்சன்ட் முப்பது வயசு நாற்பது வயசு ஏஜ்ல வராங்க ஹவு கம் நாற்பத்தி ஒரு நாள் பிரதம் இருந்து சபரிமலைக்கு வரக்கூடிய இளைஞர்களுடைய எண்ணிக்கை வருஷா வருஷம் பெருகுது மைபி அது ஒரு டூரிஸ்ட் ஆகோ அல்லது ஒரு பிக்னிக் ஆகோ வராங்கிறத நான் முழுக்க சொல்லலாம் மாட்டேன் பட் காரணம் என்ன தே லைக் டு த வே ஆஃப் என்னது மது மாது மாம்சம் இது மூணும் இல்லாம கொஞ்ச நாளைக்கு ஒதுக்கி வைப்போமே ஸோ இந்த ஃபார்ட்டி ஒன் டேஸ் பினான்ஸ் என்னை எந்த அளவுக்கு எல்லாம் என்னைய வந்துட்டு ஒரு ப்ராப்பர் மனுஷனா ஆக்குது நான் இப்படி எல்லாம் இருக்கணும் அப்படி எல்லாம் இருக்கணும் அப்படின்னு ஏதாவது ஒரு சயின்டிபிக்கா ஏதாவது ஒரு ரீசனிங்கோட சொல்லும் போது அந்த வைக்கு ஆன்சர் கிடைக்கும் போது இன்னைக்கு இருக்கிற யூத் தே வில் பிளஞ்ச் இன் டு விட் விதவுட் எனி திங்கிங் பேட்டர் ஸோ அந்த பிளஞ்ச் பண்றதுக்கு வி நீட் டு பி த ரியல் சப்போர்ட்டிங் ஃபோர்ஸ் வி நீட் டு ரியலி டேக் தம் ஹேண்ட் ஹோல்டிங் இஸ் வெரி வெரி வைட்டல் அந்த ஹேண்ட் ஹோல்டு பண்ணணும்னா ஐ டெல் யூ மேட்டர் ஆஃப் மந்த்ஸ் If this pandemic can change the whole situation, the whole scenario, and everybody is speaking about a new world order is being coming in force. A new world order. Why not this cannot happen? It can happen. If you come to IT, you come to IT. Okay. 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 This is about the pandemic. Even after the pandemic. even after the pandemic i know there are thousands of people interested in the harigana putra bhajan samaj activities all around the globe people from us everybody are they coming out with performances even after the pandemic koil or vishesham nadandalo live nammude facebook page la kaamikkiradhukku okay responsibility you ninga paathukinga pa adhe mari baaki irukra transportation arrangement you do it adhe mari anadana arrangement saapadu parimaarra serving arrangement you please do it and adhe nerathile matha kaaryangal periyavanga seiyavendidhu periyavanga seiyanum please involve them involve panni senja wonderful changes can happen because the why cancer avangalukku kedaikkanum avangalukku or porupu varanum avangalukku or porupu varanum they should be made responsible and in the generation gap i'll tell you this is the biggest stumbling block in the block maarnum na avanga group avangalukku thaniya uttrum namba group periyavanga group periyavanga ladies group ladies group so in the mari because i need to say even in my organization for the last two months every wednesday and saturday i'm having one hour program with the youth 40 years and less i know pretty well okay i am uh, not a big old guy or not even an young one i am in my mid 50s so mid 50s and the knowledge what is going to happen to my organization and i am seeing position edutha chinna vaisla periya unga they don't want to come out of the positions that are there okay so and the mari varumbodu how the change has to be brought in so i am really generating almost hundreds of people in each district of tamil nadu i am able to really bring in people so in the madri or youth empowerment movement la namba step eduthomna i'll tell you end of this pandemic we are going to come out with the great results if that can if any other changes can happen why not this for which everybody should start thinking on that same angle we are responsible we will make them also responsible over to you ji yeah well said ayyapada ji and actually the paradox of life and uh, which we parents don't realize uh, one of the greatest ironies i would say and uh, one of the dismal features of our uh, present current lives in this kali yuga is that uh, we parents also are uh, to be blamed because uh, when a youth realizes the importance of a ganesh festival ganesh chaturthi festival or a dasara or maybe uh, your um, christmas today we find this youth celebrating this uh, festivals in a very grandeur and a great manner and wearing exotic clothes buying jewelry is doing all sorts of things now this is actually a total misplaced priorities and misplaced information because they feel that these festivals are meant for enjoyment and for networking now networking is such a such a misnomer and it is a sin now why do you network to create friends or you to create contacts who will be useful to you but once the usefulness usefulness is gone the relationships have gone so today if you are going to organize these i mean participate and organize these festivals 
for the sake of networking i think you are living in a fool's paradise on the contrary the youth doesn't realize by participating in community activities and religious activities it is not only religion it is not only prayers you are doing anadanam you are serving mankind you are helping so many people earn their livelihood and it encompasses a gamut of social activities along with religion so when you tell a youth come to the temple and do this activity no i don't believe in religion i mean there is no question of not believing the religion means it encompasses each and every facet of the activity activities which are involved when you do annadanam when you do so many things i mean you are a part and parcel of it and when you do that your whole sense your whole mind your heart gets compassionate and you start realizing the human values and you get grounded even if you are an md in a company you realize that yes today i have to serve human being i have to serve mankind and this is why i have been born and brought up but these are all missing so unfortunately the whole concept of the youth being misled by the parents now today we have uh, great saints we have great tantri mel shanti bs parents know the utmost in- importance now shankaralyam was has been uh, titled as mini shabri velai by jagadguru badri shankaracharya sri vidyavinava sri krishnananda tirtha mahasamigal shakadapuram mahasamigal has given the title of mini shabri velai now your shankaracharya giving that title is of utmost importance he will not give it for flattery nor will it give it just to please somebody but the fact is a enlightened spiritual guru who realizes the immense potential in that a lord ayappa who is residing in shankaralayam today we are urging the youth to come and you know do service there so that they get blessed now recently about 15 days back one of the leading industries of the city leading of the country not only the city of the country i bear i mean he is number 1 i don't want to give the name of a different faith and different uh, religion they had some issues so they and it's a practice in the company to do a perform a prashnam to find solution to the problems when they did the prashnam through zoom at kerala but nambudri in kerala he suggested that you should perform some archana to lord ayyappa at shabrimalai now going to shabrimalai now is out of bounds you cannot go so the nambudri said obviously you can't go to shabrimalai you go to a temple in chempur shankaralayam lord ayyappa is there you go and perform the archana there and trust me on that day about last week when it was pouring cats and dogs the entire city was under floods that industrialist with the vice chairman and the cfo of the company drove down from petter road 3 hours in that floods and lot of hurdles they reached shankaralayam at 7 o'clock performed the archana and that big industrialist i was present luckily i was present there i was so humbled that the youth should realize that you know with the status now he need not have come he could have sent his uh, you know general manager or an officer giving him money hey, go and perform archana in shankaralayam but he himself came he realized the value because that entire this whole family even though they belong to different faith are totally spiritually inclined now these values in that family have been imbibed by their grandfathers and forefathers but unfortunately in our case our parents like for instance we ourselves have not done that it ended with our parents now you tell your children that oh in shankaralayam jagat guru badri shankaracharya has come come and take his blessings or uh, tantri from uh, shabrimala is performing abhishekam to lord ayyappa come and witness that event sorry you are there you please uh, take the blessings on our behalf this is the answer you get now after i mean parents who is the next line so when it comes to ganesh chaturthi they want no no uh, you know you should come down you should come to the pandal you should show your face people will ask where you are that time you want your parents visibility there because they want the society to feel that everyone is together they want the crowd but when your parents are telling you the reality that god is there come and just pray you don't have to do anything you are not coming so this misnomer and the pursuit of wealth and fame and position should be dispelled 
it should be eradicated from our minds and every youth should live practically yes study well yes pursue your career well yes no doubt reach that position of being a president or a managing director or chairman yes very good but once you do that don't forget your duties towards the society don't forget the duties you owe towards the mankind because that is the reason you have been born on this planet earth but unfortunately that is missing so the way how youth should be channeled is is what would be your advice to youth not to pursue only wealth and uh, you know positions so ji i actually wanted to sum up my stand on this definitely every one of us have to take our responsibility in our life one thing that i would love to put across to all who are watching is to come from a space of accepting what it is right now in the world for ourselves and our youth they have showed up in a certain way and for us to really realize that they are part of the ecosystem and for youth for you to really step up to ask yourself what is this life for you what is it when we are able to really come in terms that like this is we say it is either a mac truck or a feather god is telling almighty is telling us something through a tap chuma tatti paathu hey mulichiko appdi solra maari irukum illaina oru arra uttu illaina oru modi thalli mulichika pa appdi solra maari irukum so ipo namalukku enna nadandirukku ulagame modi thalli oru maari mulichiko nu wake up panirukom so idu idhey thaani namalaala wake up panna mudiyalana nama idha solla kadavul dhaan kaapathrom appdi inde but at the same time has come to the realization as every individual namalukulukku oru theedal irukku adu theedala dhaan vandu maathi maathi nama yosichirukom onnu vandu kaasu nu yosikrom illa na fame nu yosikrom oru veedu nu yosikrom illa na nalla sosana vaalkai nu yosikrom nama vaalkai nama vandu oru maayila maathikittirukom so as youths as everybody who is watching this nama vandu ellaru naladhe yosikkuvaanga nu oru intention set pannuvom ellame oru intention la aarambikkom so nama intention inda tarnathil nama ellarum join panni or intention set pannuvom ella mari varudhu vandukittu irukku i think i have this, had this conversation with janji many times that we need to bring in positivity into the space where yes veliya paaka vidhyasama da irukku ella olungave illa correct except namma enga irundha aarambikka porom koli modala vandicha kunji mutta modala vandicha adhu dhaan kadha inga nama enna solrom நம்ம அந்த பிகினிங்கா இருப்போம் எப்படி இருக்க போறோம் we set the intention that everything is shifting right now இந்த தருணத்துல எல்லாம் மாறி வருது எல்லாம் மாறி வர்றாங்க மாறி நம்ம யூத் நம்ம வந்து நல்ல புரிஞ்சிக்கறாங்க அவங்க வாழ்க்கையில நல்ல அர்த்தம் ஆரம்பிக்குது அவங்க வாழ்க்கையில இந்த இன்டென்ஷனை as parents நம்ம இந்த இப்ப இந்த முடிவே எடுப்போம் அவங்க வரல அவங்க வரல அவங்க வரலன்னு சொல்லாம நல்ல இன்டென்ஷன் செட் பண்ணி ஐபாஜி சொன்ன மாதிரி சர்டன் ஆக்ஷன்ஸ் எடுப்போம் அவங்கள இன்க்ளூட் பண்றதுக்கு இந்த இன்டென்ஷனும் இந்த ஆக்ஷனும் சேர்ந்து வரும்போது எனக்கு இது நல்ல ஒரு மாற்றம் உருவாக்குங்கிற ஒரு நம்பிக்கை இருக்குது கண்டிப்பா எஸ் யூத்ஸ் உங்களோட ரெஸ்பான்சிபிலிட்டி இஸ் டு ஆஸ்க் யுவர் செல்ஃப் உங்க வாழ்க்கையோட உண்மையான அர்த்தம் என்ன பிகாஸ் யூ ஆர் சீங் இஸ் கோயிங் ஸோ செட் தட் இன்டென்ஷன் ஃபார் யோர் செல் நல்ல ரைட் பீப்புள் the six degree separation so when we sutti ullavanga eppadi irukanga apdi dhaan nama vaalka muriyum nama tharamum irukum so nama happiness theri porumbodhu ad internal happiness ah superficial happiness ah adha konja gauge panipom idhu vandu evlo naal last panudhu ena balloon burst pandra mari ipo nama ellaru kete nalla excited ah pesitirukom adha moonjona veetukku poi cook panna aarambo saapra aarambo ella marandu poidum apdi illama unmaiyile or intention vachi இன்னைக்கு இந்த மாற்றம் நம்ம வாழ்க்கையில நம்ம சமூகத்துல நம்ம நாட்டுல உருவாவுது அப்படிங்கிற ஒரு முடிவு எடுப்போம் கண்டிப்பா நல்லதே நடக்கும் ஐயப்பதாஸ்ஜி none of the youth want to participate in religion for the simple reason that as i told you they have formed their own networking uh, you know base they have their own groups and uh, then some education 99% of the time goes in chat on whatsapp and uh, being together so for them the entire life revolves around that circle yeah. of friends now, now a time is coming when the parents take the third step not stage not even the second 
<laughs> so when the friends become the crux of their entire life so religion and everything has become a sort of a taboo save and except only during the times of ganesh chaturthi or such festival where the same sort of same group of friends also participate yes, so now this they should realize that the, the pandemic has given time for each one now, why are we having these sessions every sunday why are we having this day after day so and that more and more people can come in more and more people can create we can create that awareness but yes. creating that awareness i think it is a duty where people may feel that every sunday in this pandemic you are having discussions but i think this discussion should it should be hammered we have to keep hammering and a sense of awakening has to happen in people that yes because today we have one prime minister honorable narendra modi ji fighting a lone battle how many enemies you have today media is the worst you have media which is against which is actually anti national and the youth gets carried away today they don't want to believe anything like aziza rightly said they want questions they want proof now when my father took me to temple i never asked him a question but that the, your questions i always maintain that your questions and doubts will be answered by lord himself when you start going to temples and praying and automatically one fine day you will get the answers and it has happened to us i have experienced this with shankaracharya many times i have gone to him with problems in mind and trust me the moment i go and prostrate before him we turn blank now this is an divine experience where we not only me many of us have felt that when we come out we said oh i wanted to ask this problem and you know it never came out but then i realized that the solution has already been found now these are real life experiences these are not fairy tales so when we tell our children they say no you are in a world of living in a different world you are prejudiced you are like this i mean there is no question of prejudice why don't you follow the footsteps of what your father or your mother is telling you because here again like last time i mentioned there is a ego battle between the father and the mother itself as to who would dominate the house in our days the father was the uncrowned king of the family today you have two dictators in the family one is the father one is the mother and both having divergent views if father tells the son you must come to the temple mother will say no why are you forcing him stop it he will come when he be feels like so there the child takes recourse to the mother's side umbrage in the mother's views and he gets away now if the father had the final word and if he were to tell the child no you have to come to the temple so be it whole dynamic should change so first the parents amongst themselves should decide that when they talk to the child it will be only one word one voice one parent will speak and ideally it should be the father i am not against discriminating on grounds of gender there is no gender discrimination here but the father should be the uncrowned uncrowned king because he not that the mother doesn't have the you know values and the things that is core to his heart but the father is the one who is actually the doer in hinduism we say in our dharma it is the doer the doership rests with the male the father so allow the father and then the mother can supplement and complement the father by taking the child to the temple now once you start doing that and the dreams of our honorable prime minister sri narendra modi ji to resurrect hinduism today we have uh, the ram janma bhumi we had the consecration i mean the uh, foundation uh, stone laying a dream which has been there for centuries nobody could fulfill now our honorable prime minister has done that and we had to go to supreme court for ram janma bhumi we had to go jagannath puri ratatra we had to go to supreme court shabrimala we are in supreme court padmanabha swami temple we are in supreme court now does the youth realize that your religion is at stake because at every step there are devices for divisive forces there are anti national forces there are terrorist forces which are working to decimate your religion and if your religion gets decimated what happens to your future children where will you go now you are taking it easy now you are living in a world of fantasy you are living in a world of enjoyment you are living in a world of going on exotic vacations exotic holidays holding exotic powers and positions or having huge bank balances 
but five years down the line, these bank balances will have no meaning. What will you do having crores of rupees in your balance? But then you will not be able to, you will be crippled. But when you can do it now and open your eyes that yes, it makes sense that we have to save our Hinduism to save our generation. Here again, we are not religiously fanatics. We are not. We have to coexist and India, Hindustan coexisted thousands of years ago. Even during the age of Ramayana, Mahabharata, you see Muslims, everybody coexisted. But unfortunately, Mughal even the invasion gave a different twist and color to the whole uh, thing. They started decimating Hinduism. They started destroying temples. Now, that was something which actually left a dent in Hinduism. And the nail in the coffin was, you know, done by the British. Now, are we going to still live in that state? Now, here is one prime minister who's given us the hope of resurrecting Hinduism. Why don't we do it? Why don't we parents get the youth together? Each religious institutions of whichever faith, be it Hindus, Tamil organizations, Jainism, Sikhism, Islam, come together on a forum, get the youth together and tell them that we have to coexist and start supporting these institutions in a positive manner, in a manner where you serve mankind, in a manner where you promote your spirituality and religion so that you become good human beings. There will be no terrorism, there will be no more coronaviruses. The saddest part Humanity is on sale is an ideal example in this pandemic. Today, we have become such cowards. The youth has become such cowards because we have no spiritual values and days. Why? Is because we don't want to help even our neighbor. Supposing you find out that he is tested COVID positive, doors are shut. Nobody wants to go and help. I mean, where are we heading for? Why don't you immunize yourself, do something, protect yourself and be of help to mankind? You are running away from the battlefield. Soldiers are there on the front frontiers fighting the battle for you, saving your lives. They are facing the bullets. They don't run away. And you are run away. There have been instances where, you know, I have been told by my friends that the neighbors, the entire building shut doors when somebody expired in, the, in their house. Nobody came to the rescue, which is really sad. I mean, then what are we talking about religion? What is the use of praying? What is the use of doing? Gayatri Japam from morning to evening or Parbam, I mean, doing Naukar uh, Mantra Japam or going to Dera Sar or going to Hindu temple or going to a mosque when you are not able to support mankind. Today, people are scared. Six months you are sitting at home. People are saying, don't go out. You'll get Corona. Trust me, if you are destined to get Corona, you will get it even sitting at home because 60, if we have seen these statistics, 30% of the people who have got this uh, virus have been sitting at home, have not ventured out, but they have contracted the disease. How? Maybe you can say they contracted through some asymptomatic person who came for delivery. So be it. But I'm not trying to say that go with the open chest and go out in the crowd and say that, oh, yeah, here I am. No, protect yourself, immunize yourself. And today it is not a deadly virus as it has been turned out to be and hyped by the media, by the pharma companies, by the people with vested interests. Yes, you must be cautious. You must ensure that you don't contract. But don't absolve yourself from the duties of helping and supporting your fellow human beings. Today, you can't even go to a hospital to see your relative who is suffering. You have to be at a distance of one mile. You don't know what's happening to your own parents or your own kith and kin. I mean, which state are we living? Now, this clearly goes to show and prove that because of lack of spiritual values and faith in God, and our faith in God is not real. It is not exponential or it is not absolutely divine or pristine. It is purely out of, you know, commercial values and also out of maybe some values which have got no connection with the religion. Aziza, what do you have to say on this? I think Aifaji would have something to say about this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, you just carry on. Yeah, so, but you know, uh, when we talk about all these values, what's uh, sh shining on me is the truth about making sure we create a, a value system within ourselves as a, as a family, a proper nuclear, where we can take forth like a very structured way. For example, like what we said, now because of this, we are spending time together. Can we spend every day about five minutes just to say some 
uh, bhajans together or some prayers together. That would create a kind of a bonding for everyone. And as you said, G, uh, I, I like what JNG uh, was talking about, especially when it comes to the whole country coming together. Just now I wanted to suggest, and that's what I put up in the group is, can we create programs that can educate on the rituals? Because I love it that not only Hindus should learn about it, everybody in the world should know. the serious meanings of rituals. I have to convince my mom, mom, this is nothing to do with the religion. This is scientifically proven. So such things, when we go out there and share in, in, a, in, a, in a form of education, you know, through the media right now, it's available, then we can definitely create a shift in the mind. Yes, continuous hitting on the head is very important. Can we give it in a more subtle way and also more fun way, more energetical way that they will be able to receive it more fun in a, in a education? Mario Maru, oh, Nama, Idle, Yenakurumba Purisha, and the Yela Mariba, Adimulema, and the Nerea, Unmagal, and the I'm not talking about the bad things about what was told, but how Bodhi Dharma was, whether it was the truth or not, I know there's a lot of controversies around it, but the fact that there is so much of hidden treasure in the religion, in the in, in the name of religion, because Hinduism, as we said, is a way of life. So, and the plural nereya hidden treasure irka. Other nama veli kondu ande. Ella tuko ada oru vile vile purachya kaatala samaj can do an amazing work with that. I think we would love to join hands to see that happening, bringing out all the rituals in and its meanings. So people will know, wow, this is fantastic. So what is it that's going not right in the journey that we are in? So this is something that I feel we can do something. And I love to have a solution-driven conversation. So this would be a solution that I feel we would love to work with the Samaj to see how we can create some programs that can really bring out the, the ritual things. That's it. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Ahipadisi, I jumped because passionate no, 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 no. by outburst and uh, yes, uh, so actually it was your turn, but uh, we are just, no, uh, no, so no. Um, what, uh, what are your views on what actually I said about, uh, you know, even in uh, talking about uh, Shabri Malai and Guru Samis, as in the last uh, discussion we had last Sunday, and Padmaji rightly said, uh, you know, that the Shabrimala Yatra has become a, so, uh, become more like a travel and tour. It's become like a picnic. And today, unfortunately, with due respects to Guru Swami, save and accept, say about 10% or 15% of Guru Swami, it has become a number game. How many people am I taking to Shabrimala with me? And you will be shocked, uh, Ayyipadas Ji, that even in our temples, I have told uh, some Guru Swamis who go from our temples, that during our Mandalam festival and during Samaj festivals, why don't you tell your group Ayyipans to come and participate? They say, no, please don't involve uh, my group uh, Ayyipans because they are only concerned with the group. They will not come and uh, participate in uh, your uh, our Ayyipa Puja. Then why are you going to Shabri Malai? Because the Guru Swamis have got that much ego, because when they are leading a group, the, un, the, the whole corrupted power they have, they, that power which they enjoy, that sadistic power of ruling over 20, 30 people who are paying and going on a travel tour guide, they don't want to be exposed in an institution where they don't hold power. So they feel that if their group happens come and start uh, working or helping, then they will realize that their Guru Swami doesn't have that much power which he is wielding outside. This is a sorry state of affairs and it is a reality whether people like it or not. I know people will not agree with me, but I am not saying all Guru Swamis are like that. There are exceptions to rule. But here this I am talking out of my personal experience. There were 39 Guru Swamis which Ariyar Bhutra Bhajan Samad felicitated and in a very, very sanctified manner. Just before the Swarnabandhanam, historical Swarnabandhanam held in the world. You were present, uh, which yeah. was done at the hands of uh, Badri Shankaracharya, Shakadabaram Mahaswami. Before one month before that, we called the Guru Swamis, all Guru Swamis of Bombay. We prayed to them that please get all your Ayyapan devotees. If each Guru Swami had got about 20, 30 Ayyapans, we thought that we'll have 700 Ayyapans witnessing the Swarna Bandana man, Swarna Abhishekam to Lord Ayyapa, which has never been performed. 
But trust me, on that day of Swarna Bandhanam and Swarna Vishayaka, not a single Guru Swami and Ayyapan was present excepting the members of Ariyar Guntur Bhajan Samaj and devotees in and around Chambur, Ghatkopar, that area. Now, where are we heading? What religion are we talking about? What spiritual values are we talking about? Then how will we inculcate these values in the youth? We are not going to show the way and we are going to be selfish. Ayyapan, this is your view on this. I, I very truly agree with you. I think even the last Sunday, Sevi Shabrimada program, I have been sharing the same thing. Not even 10% of the Guru Swamis are up to the thing. So their intentions are totally different. Commercialization to the core. So intentions are not the same. They are not the same. They are not the same. They are not the same. What is in it for me? Okay. Anga Visheshan Narakkide, Swarnapandana Narakkide. Anga Enoodi Teema Kondavar Nala Enaketa Prayajano. So this is what the thinking pattern had been amidst and that is what the biggest, uh, what is a dilution happening amongst the all Hinduism activities. And I also agree with you, Jainji, the terrorism and whatever the nonsense is happening, it's because of the real religious values. Values, if I think Professor Mani has commented one thing, I just wanted, and I even number first of the session, Padmaji, Ramesh Ji, Allah, in the session of Pesam Gosanamari, why not the Hindu institutions, the temple authorities, the temple management committees in every area, let it be in a city or in a district or in a state, try to come together. You know, because everybody are facing such a situation for the last six months because of this pandemic. So number one, bande, why not we try to do something? Why not we start imparting education, religious education? Something really good, the values, inculcating good values into them. You know, because that is the way we can really get into. And another humble submission as a solution driven for this particular activities, what Harira Putra was in Samajas. I just wanted to see JNG, a one session, a two hour session with some five or seven youth who are going to be coming live and sharing their own experiences on a particular topic connected with the religion. Let's see what it is. Let's just give them, let them make them responsible, understand. They are going to bring in the so-called WhatsApp friends, the so-called networking friends, whoever it is. And they will understand. They cannot speak anything irresponsible because everything going like they will understand what it is. They will have and the parents can really hang hold in Siri. So Siriduli Peruvalam Gramari, let us start this in a big way. And I'll tell you with all the leadership qualities what you possess. So I have talked to you earlier also. If you can't, who else can? Why not you think in that fashion? If Ariyara Putra Bhajan Samaj in a very concerted way, if this committee of learned people, highly valued people, educated in very good positions, led by such a dynamic person like you, if you cannot imagine the plight of other small, small institutions, small, small temples. So let us, let you be the torch bearer. Let you be in the forefront. Have a session for the youth. Ask them to share whatever they have in mind. Create a, a subsect for them in the temple committee. Let them come together. Give them the ownership of a particular event. Give them an ownership of something to be conducted. Make them become responsible. And I'll tell you in another three months or six months, you are going to witness a drastic change in them. And then it will altogether be a celebration that you all, the committee members, will feel relaxed. There are the next gen people who are prepared to take the reins from you and carry forward the journey. And then I need to talk to Jaindi. You will be a most completely satisfied person with great things happening. Money, my professor, money has come. He has the person who is moving with the youth all around, talking to the youth, performing with the youth. Why not he be involved in Toto and he can attract people? So please get into this phase. I think this is going to happen. Let us set the intentions right. By the start of Richigam 1, the Shabrimala season, Harira Mutra Bhajan Samaj should have a youth group inculcated, a 41 people youth group in Harira Mutra Bhajan Samaj going to take care of the activities for the Mandalam season, the 41 days. Let them be given the opportunity to perform the bhajans. Babu Mama, let him guide. 
with mama let them guide let the youth be given the opportunity to have the budget do everything annadanam have their own way of set up doing things with all your guidances i'll tell you you are going to see the real change and then this youth are going to be the real people in the front in the forefront for all the things to happen yes ji i have other see your birds are music to my ears i wish it comes true we have not that we have not tried we have desperately tried getting youth involved and uh, as in our samaj we are i think one of the unique institutions uh, which i can proudly say we have a very good knit uh, family close knit family of members each and every family is worth its weight in gold and uh, we gel well it's a holistic unified approach in our samaj and uh, sharing responsibility is up absolutely no issue at all i mean even when we organize you have seen for yourself uh, when we have organized yes. mega events like magram festivals which have been uh, run at international levels i mean we just uh, give responsibilities to various people in various fields and they are executed to perfection so the question of handing over responsibilities is not an issue at all but the question lies that even last two magrams we have urged our members to try and rope in the youth but none of the youth wants to get into that because they have this misconception about religion and uh, aziz has he was just messaging me that uh, we should try and run online classes for our uh, youth to uh, on hinduism and uh, telling them to the work you know which uh, each institution is doing and the importance but aziz has he again the bottom line and the problem lies is does the youth have the time to be on the online uh, courses for such uh, issues no i'll come back to you so my only uh, submission was that we are fighting a battle where i don't want to say we are fighting a losing battle i don't want to be negative but i think uh, we are fighting a battle where it's going to be a long term battle convincing the youth now why this pandemic is in place also the youth should realize that if you are in seclusion and confinement of your homes for 6 months if god has decided that you stay put for 6 months and i don't know how many months more, more so the youth should realize that yes there is something wrong with our way of living this is the time the youth should now recharge their batteries and reshape redefine their lives and get into something meaningful instead of sitting at home being on the computer being watching televisions whatsapping chatting with your friends and while enjoying your time these are the pristine moments for pandemic many for many people these are frustrating depressing and devastating moments but for some these are great moments of opportunities create the moment of opportunities the youth should now regroup and listen to discourses listen to great spiritual masters now they want to follow spiritual masters who are high class and high class and who pro- propagate living the way these youth want now this is not dharma i try to tell them nothing wrong in the, i am not decrying any spiritual master or any spiritual so called now in you have so many self self styled gurus and uh, spiritual masters but the youth doesn't realize that, that the truth lies somewhere else just because this spiritual master is wearing a suit and a tie and a coat and telling you that you should do this you should do that you can go to you know a jamming session you can go to a disco you can go there and you can live your life you know that guru is something great i think again you are living in a different world but what is your hinduism if you see and for today's youth even rama and mahabharat they feel that this is all mythology i mean it is a sad part so again uh, aziza ji uh, your views on online courses which you are mentioning Yeah, it's not online courses ji we want to we can you see there is a lot of ways i can visually share about certain things <coughs> that is meaningful like for example i'm just giving you simple example maavela irukku podrom adu or video mari or kadha mari nama share pannalam so that they get a value it's not some you know in singapore when we do those stuff it is like very uh, funny uh, why would we want to have such things in our house and the madri but what is the reason behind it so in the madri certain information sir rituals nam saying both why is it done for exa- and and that will give value on even why abhishekams are done what is happening when abhishekams are done you know i was very blessed to be part of 
since the age of 12, I just ended up in Palani Malay, in Tirupati. I've been to Tiruvannamalai and of course in Samajin, in the temple where I was blessed to have be part of the Meshadis, Sabarimala uh, Pujas. My question is, do people know what is happening when such energy is being spread? So other words, education, class, you see when at the end of the day, how many people have the patience to sit down and listen to all this? So we need to give them in bits and pieces, in interesting ways, in visuals. Let's have a discussion on that separately. We will be able to do something very empowering and captivating, even creating history for the work of how this uh, these, these important elements and scientific uh, energy work of the of the Indian roots can bring to the world. I think this is going to be really, really powerful. So, and all the uh, all the things that we are doing, rituals and tanya, which is another question. As in our walk, we are going to do that. As in our part of our walk, here, this is our work. This is this is our habit. Our work. We are telling about it. It's a different game. So, this is where I feel we can go towards not just running classes. We are going to do that. No, absolutely true. I mean, uh, what you say makes a lot of sense. Uh, we should do that. But the mood point again comes back to how to get the youth, you know, rewire their thoughts and get them back into our fold. That is the, the main thing. And I strongly believe that, yes. And unfortunately, the saddest part is that it has not even sunk into the elders, even the present days. That when I talk about religion, it's not about talking about one specific religion. I'm talking about religion par, pan uh, universe. That every religion has been created by God. to give sustainability sustainability to life and to give purpose direction and meaning to life now when he does that he attaches certain regulations stipulations and rules to be followed now which cannot be compromised now unfortunately those have been thrown caution have been thrown to winds the rules have been tampered trampled upon and tampered now we are going in a different direction because it suits us we are chasing material wealth we are chasing power we are say, chasing positions because it suits us today even when children the parents go enna pa eppo paathalum kovil poi irukka vera vela illaya i mean these are the sort of comments they come now even for iepens you know we pray to lord iepa sangadam theerpavane that is the god who removes obstacles enga sangadam theerpara neenga na sangadam kondu varal so we should do lot of introspection we should all sit together as a family and draw a plan out i know there will be a lot of resistance from the youth today dressing sense going to temples i have seen youth even in shankaralayam some of the youths coming in half pants girls coming in jeans now there are certain decorums you should uh, maintain now these parents have to inculcate now unless right from the basics you are not able to inculcate into children where will we go today the youth is going to tirupati balaji because why they feel that if you go and pray there your prayers will be answered you will become a millionaire your shares will uh, multiply multifold you go to vaishno devi your prayers will be answered uh, answered i mean if you can do that you can believe that lord tirupati can answer your prayers and give you your uh, you know blessings or convert your uh, blessings or whatever prayers into reality then why can't you sustain that intensity of the belief in tirupati balaji or vaishnav devi or lord ayyappa or whoever it be why is it that momentary now it's become a fashion tirupati you call up somebody hey, do you have influence do you know somebody who can push me through in who can get me a quick darshan same thing with vaishnav devi do you know somebody okay from vaishnav devi we okay we are going to kashmir so that is closer to that now it has become incidental going to tirupati has become it tot becoming totally commercial so your connect with the god is only to the extent that when you want wealth you want money and when your resources are drying up you think lord balaji is the lord of kubera he is having that much wealth that when you go and prostrate or pray before him for that split second jargandi they do a glimpse of a, even a second split second you get a darshan you feel that you have attained the entire world nonsense they don't realize that that glimpse of the moment in falsity in front of tirupati balaji as said by adi shankara is wrong 
you are not amassing wealth the wealth which he gives you is the wealth which is polluted to teach you a lesson that the wealth which you accrued through such devotion will end up paying your hospital bills trust me this has been mentioned in our scriptures so lord also plays with you if you play with him if you start trading with him he also plays along lord krishna we know he, we know is leela the leela of lord krishna need not be told everybody knows so when you pray to lord that i want money i want money he say okay so be it, my dear son take it but then that money is of no use to you but if you go to lord just with pristine devotion don't ask because he knows what you want and then sustain that seamless devotion towards him and see your bank balance is overflowing see your entire change self transformation in you why don't you do that how many times to tell i mean the youth are enamored see instant once they want instant gratification na patruva kudutha enaku 100 rupaya kadikanam bhagwan ante patruva undilo potta 100 rupaya kadikanam how many times i have told people that what you donate in a temple you will get 10000 times in return in form of seamless blessing which will which you cannot imagine or cannot see you can only experience them but unfortunately we want everything rokda translated into money if i give 1000 rupees tomorrow i want 10000 rupees back but trust me if you whatever you give you give uh, god will never keep your money with him but if you give it devotion forget give it forget it don't you know think that when will uh, come back i'm sure world will will be a better place i will tell you my personal example when uh, the sri madam was from shakadaparam swami will sri madam it is a nascent madam and uh, our shankaracharya is a very very young vibrant and uh, very enlightened spiritual uh, master he wanted uh, me to be one of the trustees way back in 97 98 and the mat was in the formative stages so then there was no mat complex it is a 400 year old uh, shakadara maharishi was residing on the banks now this is worth listening and each trustee was uh, to pool in 9 lakhs to create a corpus and build the madam so i told sri karyam 9 lakhs for me in 97 i said my god i don't think i will be able to join in because 9 lakhs is something which i have never even in my life uh, donated or uh, but somehow you know i don't know his holiness had a tremendous uh, i mean uh, sort of liking for me or i should say i feel blessed that he selected me as one of the trustees within 3 days i don't know some it's a miracle something that 9 lakhs was in my bank account and i gave a check of 9 lakhs even today i am wondering from where it came how it came i don't know and from there that day there has been no looking back now these are the weird ways god works people should realize after giving that money i never looked or never asked and i gave it in my full heart i was so pleased that he has selected me as one of the trustees i gave him that 9 lakhs not to him to the trust for the formation of the trust and since then there has been no looking back now these are experiences which are absolutely facts so likewise uh, before we conclude the last round of questions ayya padar ji your question is to the youth what would you appeal to the youth to do in your last summarizing of the whole episode yeah i think uh, youth are able to do a lot in whatever the field the chosen field and as you rightly said the discussion for almost more than one and a half hours we had been finding fault that they are really not into the religious space not into the spiritual space they are not understanding the value so in a padikkoda or padipai pathina value based education nam irukumbodu vaazhkaiyila value add pannanumna without religious practices without spiritual practices vaazhkai vandittu or full shape ku varapodilla so and the importance is very much essential for the youth to realize and they need to really understand the essence of what the religious practices are or family system na enna or family system the religion how it is really bonded and how the karta of a hindu undivided family how hinduism as a way of life has developed into such a way because of the involvement of the youth so namba youth a irundha pe eppadi irundhom 
with all those examples set in i think it is a high time this pandemic has made everybody realize that nothing in this world is a constant one everything is changing we are experiencing changes so in that instance the youth need to realize we may need to make them realize the importance of the religious activities the spiritual activities along with the social thing along with the way they want to really absorb it digest it and put forth so that the involvement of youth in all these things as just how they are excelling everywhere will happen and that is the real intention we need to set by the end of the session that they are there they will be there they are going to come out with miracles the changes whatever all the parents over here the people the elderly people the real learned people who are hearing it let's set the intention everything is changed everything is changing and god it's going to take care of all the things and the youth are the really backbone of the world and i'll tell you india the whole world looks at india not for the wealth not for the money not for the resources the biggest resource the whole world is afraid of is the youth population in india you know pretty well the youth in india are outnumbered than any other one in the whole globe so that is where we are standing so stern big and the whole globe is looking at india so and the youth ku the realization a kondu vattomna i will tell you the change has happened it has started happening and everything is going to come to us in so this is what my uh, humble submission over here at the end of the session thank you ji yeah this is a i mean your round up uh, summary and message to the youth yes ji thank you so much I, at the end of the day i feel that it is about us our life journey of finding out why are we here in this world so giving gratitude to our parents and the roots of our life and like what we are talking about where the whole world is looking at india for development it is in our home in in our roots that we can really focus on growing and nurturing the opportunity is here the whole world is coming into india why facebook is investing in india why uh, alibaba is looking at india why walmart has invested in india because the opportunity is here only here so when we we don't have to go out there is creating opportunities right now in our home that matters and remembering that in our roots our parents are there our grandparents are there you know it's the family that remains with us forever no matter what happens is our ratta bandham da ellame kadaisila varumbodhu anything can break out except for the blood relations that stays with us so adha nama unarano adha 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 saandulla vishayatha nama eedu pottomna we can create a lot of value for that you need to find out what is it that you really want in your life beyond atom patam godato don't tell us that after 20 years 30 years yenakella mudiya yenak okay ana peraga na yosippen then it be too late idu nere thara ketupinga innor ku ketupinga idu mooliyama innor ku ketupinga that at the end of the day it is for us to know who we are what we are supposed to be doing with our life in this lifetime being born in india as a indian regardless of where we are in the world as a indian namalku oru porup irukku adha nama semmaya seivom vaalkaila nalla ellorum seindhu munne munnukku varamudiyum that's what it and also realize thank you so much jenji for giving us the opportunity to be sharing in this space and for everyone to also uh, be participating thanks to samaj and all the participants who have been listening in on here as well as on the facebook as well thank you yeah rightly said time and tide waits so no man and you should realize that you know they have not come here with a written ticket where they know that their uh, destiny in this world is going to be a span of life is going to be say 80 90 100 years life can go in a whimper so when you are living be live and kicking be do something useful be do something which is of purpose to the society purpose to your family purpose to human values not to values of building wealth and accumulating positions now this stark reality should hit the youth and they should realize that life is unpredictable nobody can guarantee you your life in pursuit of your education going abroad 
in pursuit of getting some positions you know mncs abroad i mean okay fine if you are going with your family as i mentioned earlier is something different because you are taking your entire bag and baggage but then why distance yourself and disassociate yourself with your family when you are born for the very reason that you are born to be with your parents and grow with your parents and grow as a family the whole concept of joint family in those days had human religious spiritual values now be with that and be content with what you earn and it is up to lord almighty to ensure that the purpose for which he has sent you on the earth he will fulfill that irrespective of what position you get in the you know uh, your company or whatever it is but today everybody wants like every family you want uh, if you have four members you want four vehicles you want four bedrooms now the demands and the luxuries and the affluence has gone out of bounds out of proportions now that is taking its toll now as i mentioned we find people mental wreck in this uh, pandemic because you are unable to pay the emis you are paying emis for your house you are paying emis for your cars you are paying emis for your credit cards you are paying emis for so many things now where is the need if you live a life of simplicity with simplicity without complexity i think you can be living a very harmonious life build relationships in the society build relationships which are profound which are based on trust and trust is based on integrity now if you have a man of trust with integrity then i think you have conquered the world everyone will be at your feet money will not bring i have seen people with tons of money absolutely being so frustrated that there are nobody nobody is willing to even recognize their wealth and even willing to give them that position when they come for the functions because your wealth has got no meaning that remains with you it remains in your bank as a balance but your human values your relationships your fine human being remove the ego in you i won't talk to him i won't do this he didn't inform me he didn't do this i mean all these things you know egoistic small small nitigrities we get into our systems which actually hamper our progress in spirituality and which unfortunately the youth cultivates from the young age and which gets imbibed into their system and as they grow this negativity is grow because then they thrive on this negativities now instead of thriving on negativities if you start realizing that yes this pandemic god has given us a break we are duty bound towards the society towards the family first towards the society and towards the nation now if you are going to be selfish and think that no oh, many companies have declared online people have to work online so sitting at home work from home fine work from home but at least that working from home two hours dedicate contact people sitting at home physically you may not be able to go to shankaralayam again another biggest uh, drawback we have in shankaralayam is people always complain and grumble about the location the location disadvantage very the location see this is your mindset when you go to shabrimala you have to go through arduous forests you have to go through arduous routes i mean there is no path lay, lay with roses when you go you go to any pilgrimage it is not roses all the way the paths are arduous and that is what bhagwan wants you to cross hard the arduous path and reach him then only you will show he can see the devotion in you now today we find escape routes in terms of hey, shankaralayam that your location and you know that thing is so bad there is a fish market in the beginning and that but the place is like a lotus in a pond where shankaracharya camped there and perform pujas enlightened gurus of the world are camping there and enjoying they are finding spiritual bliss leading industries of the countries are coming and finding spiritual bliss for them location is of no consequence so don't get into the escapism route distances do not matter i do agree in mumbai today traveling is a great constraint now from western suburbs if you have to come to shankaralayam yes easily two hours are lost but if your mind and if you are devoted to lord if you are devoted and committed towards lord i am and towards the institution one day two days you will find the difficulty but third day that two hours will translate into two minutes trust me this is the lord's game at play have implicit faith in lord convert your youth brains of your children and may ensure that whenever you come to a, go to any religious satsang take them with you at least for a brief moment 
get them you know motivate and inspire them it's a long term battle and we should continue this this pandemic is an ideal time and we should create more platforms so that somewhere down the line i'm sure some even 10% of the people get impacted by our talk and realize that what we say makes a lot of sense and trust me i, I strongly believe that hinduism is in danger so much so is in danger is our lives of our children and our future generations we are seeing it it is in front of our eyes take the newspapers the bias against hinduism they don't publish a single report on religion hindu religion take television take your films showing utter gruesome murders rapes everything we are living in a society which is leading us to a state of doom so this is a scary situation and a scenario we are living in and we at hariyara putra vajan samaj we strongly feel that this is the right time for us to be vocal vociferous visible and create more such platforms because uh, these institutions also the youth should realize that not only hariyara putra vajan samaj but like hariyara putra vajan samaj there are hundreds of in- institutions which are languishing for want of youth now what will happen if you don't support if the youth doesn't support this institution another 5 10 15 years down the li- line these institutions will have to be handed over god knows who will take over what will happen to your religion your faith will you still be living in the state of falsity and state of illusory world where you will just go on accumulating bank balance and status and at the end of the day what when your status goes your bank balance goes whom will you lean to where will be your roots your roots are uprooted so wake up and open your eyes see the dark reality a harsh reality which is in front of you it's no time for playing fool and playing around you know just going by the flow and uh, on behalf of hariyar putra bhajan samaj and shankaralaya sansta i would like to thank uh, dr Aziza Jalaluddin from Singapore who has given shared her profound views and to Ayyapada ji who is also a part and parcel of Shankaralayam and he has been a great uh, guiding force to us and all the viewers who have been tuned in for uh, from 11 o'clock I mean I should say 10.30 a.m. listening to us and please share your views on our Facebook page and also give your suggestions because we will keep these discussions ongoing. maybe with different titles and different uh, speakers to see that we hammer this point till such time we get at least 10 to 20% of the youth back into our fold with this this is giant clubs here returning you back to our studios with namaste and a very happy sunday afternoon thank you swami sharanamayappa swami sharanamayappa thank you